स्मृति ईरानी जी विवेक पब्लिशर्स प्रोफेसर ब्रांच पे एंड एन कोलीग सुधीर ऑल ऑफ यू नमस्ते द गुड थिंग ऑफ बीइंग एट द एंड ऑफ द लिस्ट इज दैट व्हाट एवर नीडेड टू बी सेड हैज बीन सेड सो यू डोंट हैव टू से सीरियस थिंग्स एनी मोर विवेक मेड दिस पॉइंट about people not standing by him sometime in 1992 90 th- end of 92 early 93 there was actually a signature campaign in delhi the names were very impressive professor tanika sarkar sumit sarkar all the jain names And these are all names you know i mean i'm a up country boy and we always thought so big about those things and the petition was about somebody as small and insignificant as me and the petition was that swapan and me should not be allowed to write in any newspaper or magazine so there was actually that kind of a uh, petition uh, my editor then was vinod mehta so he had a big laugh and he threw it away but the story doesn't end there vinod had a fight with the promoters he resigned and the promoter brought in a very convenient editor he was known as a handout editor so handout as in a press handout wo chhap deta tha he was always he was in favor those were very interesting times and those were also very challenging times i i wrote a piece which was published under the headline rom rajya versus ram rajya it was a very you can it, it is still exists on the net somewhere it was a very casual comparison of two ideas sonia gandhi's pa vincent george he called up this handout editor and said madam is upset so the editor summoned me and when i walked into his room it seemed he was he he was on the verge of having a heart attack i mean you know, there was he was sweating profusely he was shivering i said you know what happened i said what happened vincent george called and shouted at me you must stop writing i basically showed him the middle finger and i walked out and i resigned <laughs> so we will this is nothing new i mean you know that, that's the point i'm making so now coming back to some more substantive points uh, we heard a lot about urban maxims you know the word i i being a bengali i i, I get slightly offended when the word naxalite is used in a derogatory manner it was a, it was an idealistic movement which began in 67 68 69 with the naxal bari uprising 50 years that has degenerated actually it degenerated in its own lifetime when it became a class war people get upset if a lenin statue a very badly made lenin statue we didn't look like lenin no resemblance no resemblance i mean it should have been brought down because it was an insult to lenin <laughs> so you know today a lenin statue in Tripura is brought down and everybody goes oh my god oh my god india is coming to an end no it isn't vidya sagar statue was decapitated during the naxal andolan jadavpur university where you had some very interesting encounters the vice chancellor was killed today when we sort of if we told sort of you know telescope into time you know, today we come to the maoists i would rather call them maoists because what we have now is the worst possible interpretation of mao's own worst possible ideas <laughs> of how to bring about a revolution now that revolution is not going to happen it it never happened again going back in time uh, i am tempted to take his name but this person who was at st stephens you know st stephens was also touched by the naxalite movement yeah. 
so one of the professors once walked into the class and found written on the blackboard teachers will have your will skim you alive and use that for making shoes for the poor student at st stephens who has now gone on to become a very well known economist and i think is currently a big honcho at either world bank or imf <laughs> he went missing for a couple of weeks so his parents were very worried you know good middle class bengali parents didn't receive the weekly postcard from him <laughs> and uh, they got very worried and they they wrote this started getting in touch with his friends so finally he sent a letter home that don't worry about me i am making preparations for the pla to march in so <laughs> so the pla never marched in <laughs> and the person making preparations for the pla to march in is now at the world bank or imf it happens there is a disputed attribution whether lenin said it or stalin said it it's a two words useful idiots so this has been a historical practice you pick up intelligent people people who are recognized as being intelligent intellectuals public intellectuals earlier we had intellectuals but now we have public intellectuals uh, i don't know i mean does anybody know i mean how is an intellectual different from a public intellectual public intellectuals more stupid than intellectuals okay <laughs> So, <laughs> I mean, no offense, professor. <laughs> I'm enjoying it very much. So, they had this concept of useful idiots, and they would pick up these well-known names from Western Academy, America, Europe, and they would bring them to Moscow, lay it out for them: caviar, this, that. You know all about wines. I don't know. So. So the best wines, the best food, the the best vodka, and the best-looking Russian women. <laughs> best-looking Russian women then, I'm so <laughs> was like you know. <laughs> so, and they would come back and write these wonderful pieces of about how Russia was the land of milk and honey. how the working class had at last been empowered and that is how one of those books it was called stalin era and that became compulsory reading for all of us in college and in high school you had to read it otherwise you you just did not belong have you read the stalin era no are you must read it so that is the kind of kind of power which they had they, they had in those days and unfortunately that sort of power still remains this co-opting of the urban thinking classes was was a tactical ploy and that tactical ploy has always worked to the advantage of the disruptor so even during the khalistani movement we had people in the urban centers who would say you know but this is not about Uh, separatism this is about the sikh identity it is about human rights but nobody had even read the anandpur sahib resolution and yet they had a view on it a couple of points which i would like to make in a great effort has been made to raise a local battalion of uh, jawans to fight maoists in bastar and it is called the bastaria regiment or the bastaria battalion one of the two and it has just been commissioned the whole idea is that they can speak the local language they know the local topography they know they are they are sensitive to local customs culture so there will be lesser violations of rights a better better action can be taken at the ground level they have been trained and now they have been inducted 
already you have the jhola walas pointing out the supreme court must take note this is reviving salwa jurung which was declared illegal by the supreme court so this and and i and i won't be surprised if the supreme court actually takes notice of it and issues notice and this also goes down the drain so these are these are hostile elements with which we have to cope with and with whom we have to live with now the honorable minister is here so i might as well use the opportunity to record a a personal grievance four years and we have not yet even begun creating a parallel ecosystem where you can bring in all see everybody does not have to be a bjp supporter everybody does not have to be a congress supporter people can be neutral people can have very strong views people can have no views but at least create a system where people are willing to take a stand against the termites whom vivek has described as the urban nuts often there is conflicting messaging by the government and this is something which i have not been able to understand despite long years of pretty close association with the bjp i have not quite understood the bjp's proclivity to try and get approval ratings from these people so that you know if if latians public intellectuals are saying we are a nice government we are a nice people see we are a nice government and we are a nice people are baba they are saying these things because they don't want their ration money to be stopped <laughs> it is also as i said a class thing politicians who come from a certain class they have a they have a natural affinity towards the urban nuxels and here i'm using the term very loosely they empathize with them i made some i just jotted down some points but one thing good and it has been done very silently without being noticed one of the big achievements of modi sarkar and i would unhesitatingly give full credit for that to home minister rajnath singh is that the maoist menace has been crushed it has been crushed from 70 odd districts which formed the red corridor it is now down to 30 and 20 are really the badly hit areas were badly hit districts and the number of kada has come down their access to funding has stopped everybody says would note bandi se kya mila you should go and ask a maoist in the field कि आपको नोटबंदी में कितना एंड इफ दिस प्रेशर कैन बी कैप्ट अप देर विल बी कैजुअलिटीज सिक्योरिटी फोर्सेस विल डाई एंड सिविलियंस विल डाई देर विल बी कैजुअलिटीज बट दिस दिस वॉर इज बीइंग वन एंड आई थिंक इन माय लाइफ इन माय लाइफ टाइम i would see the war won and the maoists defeated yeah. <laughs> lastly thank you very much vipul ji for for considering me worthy enough to be here 
Thank you everybody and Vivek really wish you all the success with the book and please, please, please read the book, buy the book, buy copies of it to give to your friends on their birthdays, anniversaries, whatever and tell your friends also to pick it up. That's the way to do it. Thank you.